I always get comments revolving around particularly BIOS updates and even more specifically my MSI one. MSI sometimes is a little tricky. It kind of reboots and then you have to reboot into the BIOS, you know, to flash it, in other words. But I'm going to show you another step-by-step. -step. No matter how many times this takes, it's good content and I enjoy doing it anyway. And I like updating my BIOSes when they become available and when I have time that permits to do it. So I figured the Dark Dragon needs it. And I will zoom right up here and show you exactly how to do it. And I'm not sure, should we do a BIOS flashback or should we do it the traditional way? Um, hmm. We're going to do it the traditional way. I just like doing it that way. So, yeah, let's get over here and do this. But before that, watch this. All right, so I have got to get on this screen. I'm going to get you zoomed in. We are going to go right to the website and download it. I'm going to show you step by step. But don't forget, you are going to need a thumb drive, preferably. Oh, it's not always. And I know I get a lot of this. Well, it worked for me. I, I, I get that. But what I use is a 16 gigabyte or smaller formatted into FAT32, preferably. This is just to accommodate all motherboards, not just the newer ones. The newer ones, you can use probably something bigger. You can use NTFS, you can blah, blah, blah. So just do it this way and we won't have a problem. Also, uh, yeah, so it's FAT32, 16 gigabytes or smaller. And yeah, if it works the other way, it works. I don't care, whatever. If it works, it works. But anyway, I'm gonna get you up close. This is your first step to have this, and we're gonna go right to the website here. All right, so this is Windows 11. Let's, uh, well, let's not do that. Let's go to, I just have Microsoft Outlook or Edge on here, and actually, nope, that's not the right one. So what we're gonna do is go to your search bar and we are going to type in, this is just how I do it. You don't have to type in MSI, but we're going to go Z, what is it, a 690. And we have the Unify, Unify, yeah, motherboard, <laughs> Unified motherboard. So we're going to click on that. And our first, oh yeah, it's the Meg. That's what I was forgetting. It's the Meg. So whatever your motherboard is, is that's what you have to put in there. So we got the MSI Meg Z690 Unified Gaming Motherboard. We're going to click on that. And of course, the support up here, like I've always told you, this support is for the website, not for the specific product. Your specific product is down here with all these tabs. So we're going to go under support. And we, we are under drivers and downloads. And then the next tab down here is BIOS. And we can see right here, this is the BIOS. Now, in order to figure out what BIOS, your current BIOS, we can come right here and select run. We got the run command, which is right there. We can go ahead and click on that. Now, down here, what we're going to do is type MS info 32 32 and that's going to give us this population here and we can see I'm looking for it right here bios version date so we have uh, right here is a 1g0 that is our current bios and right here we can see we have 1h so forget these other numbers and letters before it the version is what you want. Everything after the V, it's version 1H. We have 1G, which is the version below it. Now this next version, all it does is update the code base, improve stability when switching to CSM, which is continue, continuous service or continuous service monitoring, I think is what it stands for. CPU, U code, version, blah, blah, blah. And it's just uh, doing some stuff to improve the uh, 14th gen CPUs, which we don't. We have a 13900K, or excuse me, we have a 13500 non-K 
in this uh, build here. So what we're gonna do is just click on this download button right here, and that's gonna put it in a zip file. Now we can close out of this entirely. We can close this, and then we can open up our file explorer, which is always that manila envelope at the bottom. Click on downloads, and I'm gonna get rid of this. Little left, whoop. I always do that for some reason. So we're gonna, I just wanna get rid of these. So we're gonna delete. Now this is a zip file which means you have to extract all the contents within it. So we're gonna do a right click on it. You don't need any special programs to extract these, just with what comes with Windows. And extract all, and we're gonna put it right back into the same folder that it came out of, which is our download folder for right the time being. And you can see that it opened up a separate page. This is still within the same thing. See if you come over here, it, ha it, it opened up right here. So this is just what it opened. So this is the contents, we gotta open up this. Now there's two of them. There's a text file, you can read that if you want. Otherwise, the only file we need is this one right here. Now ASUS sometimes has a couple more. Uh, Gigabyte might have a couple more things in here, but generally speaking, you're looking for the largest file size. If you, I make this a little bit bigger for you. You can see that this file size is 32,768 kilobytes. So that is, it's actually 32 megabytes but this is the file that we need. We are going to do a right click on it and we're gonna copy, okay? You can also do Control C on your, on your keyboard. Then what we're gonna do is grab your thumb drive, you know, mine's labeled BIOS, stick it into the back of your computer that you're updating or that you need uh, or a different computer. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna wait for that to populate, which is right there. Now I'm just gonna close it and we're gonna extend this just a little bit. Now see right down here, this is where it is. We're gonna grab this file and we're just gonna drag and drop. And that's it. The other way you could do it is you could do the, the copy, which is what we actually did. And then you could have gone in here and hit control V on your keyboard or right click and uh, right here, click paste. That is the other way. So now we're done with that. Now what we need to do is actually get into the BIOS itself. So there's a couple ways to do that. You can either go sort of the long way, which is um, basically going through the start menu and clicking or finding the recovery and rebooting into the BIOS through that, which I've done and I've shown in the past. You can watch my other videos. We actually might, I might have to do an update on this computer, it looks like, before, we'll see. But if I click on this and the power, um, oh, we do have an option just to restart. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So now we're gonna restart. And as it's restarting, you'll see the keyboard and I have a delete key right here. And what we're gonna do is just, when you start seeing that reset disappear, we're just gonna start tapping this about two every, two times every second, roughly. And on most mother, newer motherboards right there, you just saw a blip. And I can basically, we're in the BIOS now. <laughs> I can let go. So, now Asus and Gigabyte and MSI and ASRock, they're all different layouts here. And sometimes I get confused because I have three different motherboards. The only one I don't have is uh, ASRock. So right down here, you can see that it says BIOS flash or M flash, I should say. That's what we want. Now, see, it says basically it's gonna have to reboot into the flash mode. I don't know why ASUS doesn't do that and an MSI does or vice versa. I don't know the difference. And sorry for the autofocus, but it turned black. So just bear with it for a second. Just gotta wait until we get a picture back here and then it'll focus back in, so I apologize for that. All right, here we go. And look at that, you got a crystal clear picture. So, it actually booted up, so it actually recognizes my PNY USB 2.0 flash drive. And you can see right here is the BIOS that we want. So MSI and 
MSI and, for instance, ASUS is a little different how it goes. I can't remember always, but it's still the basic same principles. We're going to click on it once, and it kind of froze for about half a second, and then this popped up. So, are you sure you want to select this file? Yes, we want to select it. Now, look at this. Hands-free, don't touch it. My hands are right here. Just watch it, walk away, do something, grab a drink, talk to a friend, call your mother, do something else, and don't touch it. Don't even touch the mouse, there's no point. And especially, don't lose, <laughs> well I can't tell you not to lose power during this, but try not to lose power, don't unplug it purposely. So if, if it can continue to have power, let it have power, don't turn it off. Uh, but other than, you know, a power outage, you can't help that. The only benefit I have is I do have a, a battery backup that these are attached to all the time. So in case the power does go out, I can actually film probably for a few more seconds without any lights. But <laughs> the computer should have, or the battery should have enough juice and the backup to um, complete this BIOS update. All right, so potentially this could go through a few reboots. And I'm just going to back it off here just so it's not flashing on you and I can kind of talk to you here. So you can go through two, three, four, sometimes even up to five or six reboots before you get back into either the BIOS. Occasionally, like on Gigabyte motherboards, I've seen this where you'll have a black screen forever. And you have to reboot it physically, but you need to wait the optimal time. What's the optimal time? It varies. It depends. If you're seeing, if you have a motherboard that has uh, a segment display readout, and if it's cycling through those, don't touch it. Um, if it's stuck on one for like 10, 15 minutes, at that point, you're pretty much safe to just go ahead and hold in the power button for about five to six seconds or just turn, on, turn it off in the back and then restart everything and you should be good. But look at that. It actually went into Windows for us. A lot of times, like on Asus, it'll go back into the BIOS. Uh, but this particular one was a pretty quick update. It didn't need to do much. Uh, I don't even need to get you close. But actually, what we are going to do is... I'm going to pull up that MS info again, and right here we are at 1.h. So, do you need proof? I'll show you proof. La 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 la. Do you need better proof? Do you need better proof? That is the best proof I can give you. That's as far as my camera will zoom in. Well, look at that. Lemon easy, lemon squeezy. And just like that, presto, we have our BIOS updated. And that, I've got to be honest, is probably one of the fastest BIOS updates I've ever done. Not only for this video, probably, but just it just didn't take long at all. So, anyway. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to pull out your thumb drive that you use to update it with. There's no sense in leaving that in. Not that it's really gonna hurt anything, but it does take resources for that USB hub. Um, if you were to plug in anything else, it's trying to read off this all the time and you know, there's no point in that. So just remember to take that out and that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you learned something. Give this thing a thumbs up to help that algorithm of YouTube to get my video out there. And consider subscribing if you have not yet and hit that bell icon just below it to get notified for any future videos. And go ahead and share this with your family and friends. And what else? Oh yeah, leave your comment down below if you wish. And until next time guys, take care.